So everyone here except Z-Way probably knows what tonight's lecture is about. No. Go. I said everyone except you, Z-Way. Maybe don't go. <laughs> not okay. no. It's actually not about go. Uh, tonight is not about go. Tonight. Go prime. <laughs> yeah, go is, tonight's about go prime. What does go prime mean? Oh, you'll learn when you get to whatever grade you get to. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably learn it by now, I think, maybe. Just follow along. Just follow along, okay? So tonight's all about Go variants, right? Or variations we can play in the world of Go. Uh, and I, I sent you guys an email out with a list. Um, there's one actually really important one that I totally forgot to include on my list. Uh, and that's Pergo. Oh, that's where I like to start. So who knows what Pergo is? Two players. Yeah, we know players. yeah, two players versus two players. Yeah. And Perigo has. Uh, I played that go before. You played Perigo before? Yeah. Good, good. Well, Perigo has a pretty good following at the US Go Congress. Yeah. Like at the US Go Congress, the Perigo night is always a big night. Um, and at the, at the US Go Congress, um, it's also gendered Perigo. So it's you know couples, male, female, uh, to a team. And we do get some pretty, say, strange pairings. Uh, you know, often, not often, every once in a while we'll have like a, you know, six don Japanese professional with like a 25 Q, you know, like little girl. That's kind of, those are fun games to watch. <laughs> Japanese pros playing all over the little girls, going over here, and over here, <laughs> and over here. <laughs> the Japanese pros playing everywhere else. You know, alternating. The um, Japanese pros somehow take account of play like that, anticipate it, and factor it in. You can try. Well, <laughs> I mean, you can try. Um, but in Perigo, right, you alternate moves, and the sequence is important. You have to keep the sequence. There's no talking between the partners. You guys might know that. Yes. No so talking. You can't that, talk. You have to put it in heart. You have, to, you have to believe in your heart. Is that what you said? Yeah. Sure. Um, you actually are allowed to say, uh, I think. Two things? Three in Perigo game? Four. The four? four How, do, you yeah. know, do you know what the allowed statements are? Like, whose turn is it, I think? <laughs> I think you say, yeah, whose turn is it? And resign is the other one I, that I know of. Yeah. Like, whose turn is it? And resign? No, no, shouldn't we resign? Should. That's what I heard. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I don't play I'm abbreviating it. <laughs> Two. Resign? <laughs> uh, I haven't played a lot of Perigo recently, uh, but. I had some Korean friends, and we had a lot of late night perigos, and not, not gendered pairs, just mostly drinking and perigo is. Did you play for one drunk, one sober, or? <laughs> not usually. <laughs> played, for, played for soju. What's a soju? It's a Korean drink. <laughs> so, perigo is good. A couple of pro, you know, perigo tips. Uh, again, if you're playing with an uneven pair, in other words, you're stronger, significantly stronger or weaker than your uh, pair, your other person, your teammate. Um, often, what will happen is, let's say person A plays here, other team plays here, you play here, other team plays here. Uh, if you're stronger, um, let's say let's, well, let's say your partner's stronger. Okay, so your partner makes a move, and your opponent does this, and you go to make the move. If you don't know what to do next, you just go play somewhere else. It's try to forcing, right? You just Say, okay, I don't know what to do here, so uh, uh, this is a bad example. So there's nothing really, you try to make a sente move somewhere, right? So maybe, uh, here's a better example. Let's say we already had this, something like this. Uh, so you're at the same spot in the game, you don't know what to do, you go, uh, I don't know what to do here, so I go here. That causes a lot of trouble. Sure. But I try to let my partner play this if I don't know this, right? And meanwhile, I try to play this if I know this, right? And try to play the areas of the board where you're strong in. And this can lead to very comedic results. Because uh, one team might eventually decide, you know what, this is more important than this. So the two white people might play over here. Are there and then your partner, plays over, your, your partner plays over here, and you try to respond, but then you're dead, and then it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's great. <laughs> Are there penalties if players start laughing? Usually not, but often if, um, if there is some sort of illicit communication between them, it's usually a couple stones, a penalty, you have to put a couple stones in your opponent's bowl if you break the rules. That seems cheap. A couple stones for talking? 
Ouch. Okay. Nothing else to throw them out. So that's Perigo. Perigo is a lot of fun. Uh, again, we're, we're going to have a lot of time for some games after the class, so if you guys want to play some Perigo, this is a good one. Uh, and it's especially fun if you have a, a team timed game, and where you and your partner share your time. That's one more thing you can be mad about with your partner for. If your partner uses up all the clock, that'll be fun. All right, so anyway, I'm supposed to mention, uh, I should mention, I want to mention, uh, that on actually December 7th, we're having a Perigo tournament here. Saturday, you guys should all come play. So, and it's handicap, so you know, bring a partner of any strength whatsoever, 30 Qs are great, you get tons of handicap stones. Does it have to be a woman? I think it's gendered, I think. It is, right, Frank? Yeah. So, yes. Saturday, December 7th. Or you can come and drag. Yeah. That's right. All right, so anyway, that's Paragon. Most of you were here at Paragon. Uh, next one I want to talk about is Auction Comey. Is that like one people? Is this like two people or three people? No. But you're going to have fun guessing tonight. Auction Comey is actually pretty easy. You, it's, it's a normal game of Go. Um, the only difference is this is a very small variation that I've, I've played a couple times and I kind of like. Uh, I used to do this a lot more when I was living in Texas and do it with the, the players down there. Um, but normally, uh, you'd play Comey as like six and a half, right? Maybe? Is this you bid for black? You bid for black. So, how many people in here like being black? I don't know any other color. How many people in here like being white? I like being white. You like being white better? Okay. Five point extra, that's a lot. Okay. You feel like the comb is big? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A lot, five point. That's fine. I like black. I like I like Moyo's thickness outside, right? And black can get all that. That makes me feel comfortable, so I like being black. No, because I like being white because like every time we count it. Yeah, you want those extra win. points. I know you want those extra okay. points. I know. I'm greedy. You want all the points, including Comey. Mm. Uh, but, you know, if you play against someone, you just auction off Comey and say, hey, I'll give you five points if I get black. Mm. And Z-Way, what do you think? If I auctioned off Comey with you? No. No? It's five points. All right, then, make, you have to, then you have to make a counteroffer. If you say no, you have to make a counteroffer. Uh, six. Six? I'll do six and a half. I'll give you six and a half if I get black. <laughs> Sure. All right, now we play, right? <laughs> Six and a half points. <laughs> Comey, I get black. So we just auctioned off Comey. Um, sometimes, you know, when I play against someone else who really likes black as well, uh, Comey gets up to like around 10. <laughs> <laughs> and half point increments, real fun. So auction Comey, pretty simple variation. Just remember that one. Uh, let's talk about Zengo, since we already talked about Perigo. I know you two guys have done Zengo. Yeah, Zengo is really fun. Zengo is fun. Never heard of it. Never heard of it? Oh, gosh. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to have John, Ziwe, Larry, you're going to play six moves of Zengo right now. So Larry, you're going to start. Play the first move. What do you do? Just tell me where to play. Play a move. Play a move. Uh, four, four, upper, anywhere. Okay, Ziwe, what's your move? Me? Yep. Uh, three, four. Which corner? Uh, no. Oh, I'm white? Yeah, you're white. He just played black, oh, so you're white. Oh, then, 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 uh, cross, cross. Oh, uh, four, four. Four, four? Uh, cross, cross, cross. I don't want to do cross. cross. John, you're black? Four, four in the bottom. Okay. Larry, you are now white. Uh, four, four in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> nice. you are now black. Oh! <laughs> oh, um, uh, approach, uh, upper. Oh, wait a minute. John, you are now white. Well, I want to know well, is what color we're going to be when the game comes oh, to <laughs> yeah. This color is why wins. it's called Zengo. Yeah. Are you saying right. color wins? Yeah, who wins? A color. Yeah, wins. <laughs> a color and no person. Nobody wins. Nobody it's Zen. Wins. Nobody well, loses. Yeah, but you can switch your mind. I like when, like, when we do it. Yeah. And, um, and I, I like that game. Losing. I like that game. Say, say, say it again, Tom. This is going to work. It works fine. So when we've actually done it, Tom's talking. Can I say a thing? Uh, when we have done Zengo in the past, uh, the way like winning and losing has worked is you have someone who's much stronger grading the moves. Yeah, and we, so I, you're I've just done. trying to play the best move every time it's your turn. Yeah, so sometimes 
we haven't done this recently in the class, but uh, last year we did a lot of it where you know we'd have them, we'd have three of them play a game of Go, and I would you know they just have to play the best move that they can, right, for both mm -hmm. sides. So it's not like they're one sided. It's not like they dig in their trench and get that whole team almost like slaughter the other color kind of attitude. It's just play the best move and I'll grade each move and give them points based on that. So that's, that's, a, that's a more competitive version of Zengo. It's not really in the spirit of pure Zengo, but, but it is a good learning, a good learning tool. And um, even if you don't have a stronger person grading your moves, it really messes with your psychology, right? You really have to think about what, what's the best thing for black, what's the best thing for white. Right. And that's a really good thing to develop in your own game. So, so almost like I already played Zenko before. Because I play myself, <laughs> and I'm, I'm using the... Uh, that's fine, that's fine. But playing it with other people is going to force you into new situations that you wouldn't get into with yourself. If you play it with yourself, then you got a certain mindset. That's right. And you don't change that when you switch. That's right. So playing, playing Go with, never mind one person, but two other people, there's going to be a huge difference than just playing with yourself. And you're actually probably going to learn a lot more from playing with those other people than you are just playing with yourself. So, okay. So Zengo, is that awesome? Yes. You guys should be like, we should be keeping track, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll uh, pick your top three, and we'll do some votes at the end here of favorite Go variants. Zengo. Zengo, <laughs> top of the list. Well, you haven't heard, you haven't heard the rest of it. All right. Next one is one that probably most of you also know, but I just want to make sure you guys are still thinking about it. Uh, it's called Capture Go. Oh. And Capture Go probably should not be played on a big board. <laughs> probably it should be 9 by 9. That seems, this seems ridiculous. Yeah, but usually 9 by 9. Where do we usually use Capture Go? Um, teaching. Like teaching. Teaching. But, you know, it, I mean, it's just an outright good game. You can play with another strong player and just play Capture Go. Have you ever done that before? Not against a beginner, yes. but against someone else who's good? Yes, I've played a lot of games against Yon and something. Ah, you on capture go? Awesome. And it's very hard to make two eyes for some reason. You don't need two eyes. You, like you almost like eat eat, you try to eat everything. You well, are you doing? Are you doing the version where the first capture wins is the game, or are you doing like some number of captures, or just just the very simplest? I'm just doing. I I have mean, actually played multiple captures in the game. Say for slip up one stone, over. game's over. Yeah. And if you're playing against another strong player. Uh, what's going to happen is neither of you are going to slip up, right, in the, like, oh my god, my stone got captured, this kind of sense. But it's going to go to the end game, right, and at the end game, you just count the territory and you can decide who wins, right, because eventually someone will fill in all their eyes and will have to be get captured. There's no passing in capture go. If you play capture go, that's a really important rule. No passing. Right, you play it out. So, if you play it again, you realize, oh, I really need a lot of territory. But I can't die. That's not how we've played. We've counted normally at the end. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You've counted normally. Not quite this, because that booth pedal is a, you know, thing. Okay, well, we're not going to worry about it. No, I thought when you play 9 by 9 they have three invisible stone right. on the board. That, no, no, we're going to talk. That's hit and move go. That's, right, that's different. Oh. Okay. Get, you know, we're talking about that. I mean, you suck. All right, so capture go. It's a good game. Try it sometime. It's 9 by 9 You can even try it on 13 by 13 if you're feeling daring. But it's a good game by itself. Just try it. And especially useful for beginners if you're te teaching someone else how to play Go without Capture Go. I mean, it's amazing. Super easy uh, introduction to Go. So uh, You don't even have to teach the rule of code if you teach Capture Go, right? You don't even have to do code, right? You only have to teach Go as three rules. You don't even need the fourth rule of code. So Capture Go is good. All right. One. Uh, next one. It's some of your favorites, I know. Z-Way, where do you want to play? Uh, it's black or white. Shh, doesn't matter. It's <laughs> the other player. Four or five. Uh, <laughs> You're playing as white. You're playing as white. Okay. Uh, okay. White? You're playing as white. Cross, cross. Cross, cross okay. All right, playing as white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Let me see again. Mind blown. Um, four sixteen. So that's why. Yeah. That's what four four. Okay, four four oh. bottom left. Oh, yeah. four four. Yep. Okay. I'm black. Yeah. Let's play here. Um, night move. Okay. 
three, three. Oh, okay. I get Attach, okay. 17, uh, 16, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if I do the hang, hang it. Um, um, 15, 16. No, no, go down. Block it, I block it. Kill there. Kill there. This is fun. 10, 16. That one? Yeah. Six. This is fun. Right, I think we'll stop here. Four, twelve. All right, this is one color go. Yeah. Yeah. I've How many of you have actually before. played one color go before? Not me. You have? Well, why is, why is this I, so hard for you then? Huh? Why is this so hard for you? No, it's hard to read. Like, oh, okay, okay. No. Oh. I still can't remember stones? what color it is. Good, yeah. Shouldn't it be played with white stone? Usually it's not with white stones. I just grabbed the black stone first just to trick oh. Z-Way into thinking he was playing white. <laughs> uh, I could have made a black. Shape. That's the most yeah, you got to remember the shape. This is a game that's all about shapes, right? You remember the shapes, you're good. Um, if you are not quite strong enough to play one color go and you're pretty sure you're going to mess up something at some point, and especially if you think you're going to mess up and your opponent's going to mess up something, um, sometimes you might want to do this when you have a third person in the room just keeping track on an iPad <laughs> of where the moves actually are. <laughs> uh, especially when it gets to end game. Yo. <laughs> I never go do oh, an, whole, an actual whole game. game? An actual whole game. I've only done it a couple times, and uh, again, these were the same Korean friends. We we played Go late in the evening with Soju, and yeah, I can imagine. Uh, for them, it was very like, like it was a very masculine, like macho kind of thing to do. Let's play some one color Go. <laughs> it was like show tough we are. Yeah, yeah show this, just, just bam. Is it lay us down? Uh, do you just have to forfeit if yeah. you yeah. can't remember enough to make a move? Or? No, you gotta play a move. <laughs> Uh, or you, if you, yeah, if you, you can just give up, you just say, I, I resign. Yeah. You can always resign <laughs> if you just don't know anymore. Um, but usually what happens is someone messes up eventually and something gets captured that they forgot about. <laughs> and then you resign. <laughs> it's usually. Uh, or you get in a big argument about whether or not a stone is black or white. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to replay the one color go game <laughs> from the beginning going here. You can play it with two colors though. Replay with two. You can replay with two, yes, but be easier. Well, but if you get to the position on the board where you the mess up happens, you don't want to have that two color versions like in existence, right? Because that gives away too much information. Anyway, at your level, I'm going to suggest play it with a third person. Just have them keep track on the iPad or tablet or I'm sure he'll love that. Board. I think Whatever. you need. I think you need to have an extra board so you have a dispute. You can start working it out. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's that's board. what he's suggesting. Yeah. yeah. You can do that too. So, but this is a really good exercise. Yeah. Like really, really good. You start to really think about shapes. Um, and the other thing it kind of lets you do is internalize the game a little bit. You're thinking about the game a lot more in here than like with these things, which is always really good to do. Um, if you can get most of the game to take place in here. Um, you know, you're 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 gonna have a good game. Uh, if you're if you're staring at the board and relying a lot on your eyes and, and visual associations, you can still play. But some, at some point, you have to internalize it a little bit. And one color go again helps that process. So, and you really will make hmm? you will make the game simpler because if you play that game, you have to try to make it simple as you're possible. Maybe, what? except when I play you one color go, I'm going to make it as complicated as possible. Right. <laughs> you can try to make it simple, he's not. That's right. But it might give the weaker player an advantage. It, it can if the weaker he player he does can, your he moves. He can, he can, he can right. memorize it better. Right, so that's the thing. If you play common moves, it's going to benefit the strong player. If you play weaker moves, it's going to screw everybody. <laughs> like, if you play, if you play un unusual moves, it's, it's going to screw up everybody. So if you just want everyone to screw up, yeah, just... Here's my opening stone. <laughs> you know, I have to wait to an approach and then, I don't know, do weird stuff, right? Constantly. There's lots of attachments all over the place. One color go, really good practice, if nothing else. And 
It's something you gotta do at least a couple times in your life, in your, in your Go playing life, is play with some one color Go. Just make that promise to yourself. And, never try. So that's and the do. reason why, like, when people play with me, they never remember the Go. <laughs> Maybe they haven't played enough one color Go. That's all I'm saying. Okay, next on the list. Uh, this is one that we do. Uh, we do. We've done it a couple, a couple of previous years at the U.S. Go Congress, um, when we have lots of players of lots of different ranks, uh, and that's called Big Brother Go. And this one, have I told anyone in here about Big Brother Go? No. I've heard that. No. Oh, I've heard of it. I think I know. You've heard of this? There's a couple ways to do it. Let's start with the non-drinking version. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, usually, you have two teams of three players, and each team uh, should have a stratified player skill. So you can have like a five Q, a one Don, and a five Don is like a good set. There was one year, two years ago, we played a game of this with three three Dons on the same team. That was stupid. <laughs> You'll see why in a moment. Um, but you have uh, basically the lowest ranking member of each team, so the five cubes. If both teams are the same, let's say the two five cubes, they're gonna play a game of Go. So let's say team A goes here, the five Q on team B goes here. But after each move, the middle brother, in this case the one Don, uh, can say, you know, this really isn't that good of a move. Let's, and, or here, let's say black plays here now. The middle brother says, no, 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 little brother, you screwed up. Uh, gives, depending on what type you're playing, just we'll say one stone to your opponent's team, so that's a capture, and middle brother will correct the move. Now, if the big brother doesn't like the middle brother's correction, <laughs> he can give another stone to the other team yeah. and correct it once again. What if you go back to the original one? So, <laughs> in, in, if, you, if you're just playing for points, if he just goes back to here, nothing happens. But if you're playing the drinking version, <laughs> there's a slightly different sequence of events that happen. Uh, so let's say little brother plays here, and middle brother disapproves. So close your ears, you wait. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, middle brother corrects the move, and little brother has to take a drink. <laughs> if, if big brother doesn't like middle brother's correction, then middle brother, uh, then I'm sorry. Then middle brother has to take a drink, and big brother can move the move. If big brother moves it back, so the big brother never Why takes a drink. Why are you guys talking about? The big brother never takes a drink. No, no. If the if big brother moves it back to the little brother's move, uh, actually, actually, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When he when big brother corrects the middle brother's move, he takes a drink to make the middle brother take the drink and 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 fixes the move. However, if he moves it back to the original move, everyone drinks. <laughs> Why are you guys talking? Oh, okay. so, so, Good. So when, so when, the, wait, when the middle brother makes a correction, he the little brother drink, drinks. But not, not the middle brother. I think, actually, I, I screwed up. Okay. If you, wanna, if you force someone else to do something, you drink and the little brother and the little, so the the person below you drinks. drinks. Everybody, yes. everybody beneath the If you make it. Beneath, if you make a correction, yes, you, you drink, drink. And, the, and the person below you drinks. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And, 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 and if the big brother corrects it back to the little brother's move, then everyone at the table drinks. Everyone with it, both sides. Including both the sides, opposing yeah. team. <laughs> including the opposing team. <laughs> so it's a, way, it's a way to sabotage everybody. This was a really good movie. I don't but I can't remember the name. It's a great movie. Okay. Check it. It was check it. Okay. Well, this is Big Brother Go. Uh, also fun to do, especially if you have you know six people of multiple different ranks. Um, there was one year we did it with uh, a nine don Chinese professional and a five don Chinese professional, Jenny Shen, who's a two don professional, yeah. and. Um, there were like three or four other just amateur dom players. I think, was, I think we had teams of four, so it's you know, you know, little, small, medium, big. Yeah, I I didn't make it to the end. I left early. <laughs> uh, so that's Big Brother Go. Sound good? Cool. All right, let's talk about Lottery Go. Now this is Andrew Jackson's favorite Go variant. Uh, most of you, I think, know Andrew Jackson. He's the five-on who teaches the Wednesday night class. 
Um, here's what you do for lottery go. Let me get a bowl. Get two bowls. And you can play this with different numbers of stones. Uh, but I think pretty normal is 15 is kind of a normal amount. But I take 15 white stones. Maybe that's 15. <laughs> and I put them in my bowl. Yeah. And I mix them up. Oh, you might play a move here. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> And so does white. So white takes 15 white so stones. Just and totally obliterate your own There's a key rule: you do not look in your bowl ever. You cannot look in your bowl. So you keep your bowl here. And when you play a move, you just grab a stone and you play a move. And sometimes it'll be black because that's the color I want to play. And sometimes it'll be white. How can you possibly do life and death? Life and death is a gambling game. <laughs> So, so, so do you decide where you're going to place the stone before you see the stone you pull out? That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's what you mean that's by lottery. lottery. That's you the lottery what? go. The, the verse, what's the name here with this Trader Go? That's oh, I've heard, I've heard it as Trader Go too, yeah. Yes. But that's the same thing. Trader same Go, go not for I want to do that now. I mean, I could, like I could have... Trader has such a negative connotation. This is lottery go. Everyone's a winner, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everyone's lottery go. Winner. Everyone's a winner with free trade. Absolutely. Uh, it's hilarious. And all ladders are just, is this a, is this a straight up gambling situation? Oh, How far you want to run a ladder out? Yeah. How do you keep your opponent from accidentally seeing the stone as they place it? You, it's, it's, a, it's a trust, David. <laughs> you, can, you can put if, it if you want to you cheat at this game, board, right? you probably right. shouldn't be playing right. this game. Right, because if you're not, this you game is not those for you. Stones are yeah, different sizes, right? <laughs> you know that? Sometimes, but <laughs> you point at the positions so, and you play the stones. Well, okay, you just reach in the bowl very quickly, grab the first stone you come out, and then just play it. And then, oops! <laughs> that was a white one. So yes, life and death is uh, terrifying. <laughs> Ladders are just, are just straight up gambling. Uh, capturing races are <laughs> often still capturing races <laughs> because often the liberty you're trying to fill in doesn't necessarily gain a liberty for yourself. And it's often the case where you're trying to fill in one of your opponent's liberties. It doesn't and actually matter. It doesn't actually matter who fills it in. So yeah. sometimes that's kind of fun. Sometimes it does matter. <laughs> but Wait. Sometimes Wait. it doesn't. Well, later on, what happens when when? I guess you have to have enough of your own stones in the bowl. I mean, you're gonna have to, when you have too many, I guess. <laughs> Put 15 in here, okay? It should be yeah, like 10%. Have, one out of every 10 moves or so. There could be a lot of moves in the go game. Maybe yeah. even more in this Put, game. It's why you put like 50. In the bowls too. Yeah, like 150, okay? So, here you go. 10% of your moves have a chance of being the wrong color. Okay. It's great when co's fill themselves. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Another fun scenario. Whoops. <laughs> go make a co threat, go take your coat. Whoops. <laughs> fill it for your fun. Now, what about the move? Uh, it, you know, self capture is a rule, so you can, you can self capture. So if I try, well, if I, I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? Because if I'm trying to fill in the last liberty on my opponent's group to capture it, right. and he fills in with his stone, it's still dead. So it's like the capturing race idea. Yeah. So, lottery go. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> Guy's not impressed. All right, here, John, help me out. All right, the last variant. Thank you. I probably need to put that many in the bowl. Uh, the last variant is my personal favorite, and I've actually got, I don't think I've gotten Andrew Jackson to play this with me yet, uh, because in this version I'm like I'm like six or seven dot in this game. <laughs> now, I'm up a couple stones, uh, but this is Hidden Move Go, and I've played this on any size board with almost any number of hidden stones. Um, I think I played it with as low as one hidden stone all the way up to I think we'll, one of the last times we did that this year's time, which I kind of went overboard. I think we did. It was, it was above 10, whatever it was. It was like 15 hidden moves per player. And here's how this works. Before the game, um, either take a key food or an iPad, or if you're good, you can just memorize it and use the trust honor system. But you mark down, let's say, this, most often we play three moves. Three moves on the board that you already own. And I think this works best on like 13 by 13 or even nine by nine boards. But I've done a lot of it. I really like it on 19 as well. So I, I mean, it works for any size. But you pick three spaces on the board, three spots, three intersections, but you already have a stone there, and your opponent does not know this. I love this game too. This game's a good game. This is a really good game. 
So for instance, I'll tell you, I might hide a move. Often, this is a really nice spot to hide a move. Why do you think this is a nice spot to hide a move? Uh, because the... If your opponent plays 4-4, four, four, you can suddenly attach to a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, later on, you get things like this. You your opponent plays this. <laughs> Like this. <laughs> like this. Like this. Um, why? Well, anyway. So we'll watch out this why is it super trapped here? Right? It's going to die. Right. Why doesn't know you have a stone here? Why thinks he's safe? What yeah. in it? Okay, so uh, how, what do you resolve when your opponent tries to play somewhere? So when your opponent says, uh huh, I'm going to ladder this stone, you go, uh uh. <laughs> and actually, actually, what usually happens when we play this is you throw your hands up in the air and you go, hit and move! <laughs> and celebration. Um, one, of the, one of my friends who I like to play with, you know, so he, the stone isn't on the board yet, right? And you put a stone down, and, and he'll, just, he'll just take his hands and just whip the stone off the board, thinking he's all cool. So, and then calmly replace it with his own. Does your opponent lose and, No, no, your opponent gets to take another move. So it's not like they're losing it's, their turn. not allowed. But, but they you, cannot play there. So you, you would also have to announce its presence if you were using it to capture. That's right. So, so you can reveal, it's possible you can reveal your move at any time. However, the board situation has to reflect reality. And what I mean by this is if you have a hidden move here and white plays here, you are required to announce to your opponent hidden move and capture a stone. Or, well, does well, he get to play somewhere else? He could yeah, he gets to play somewhere else. Oh, no, no, well, in this case, no. I mean, that's... that's. Well, no, when he played into a self-capture. Oh, it's a self-capture. Actually, yeah. all right, so that would be... It. that. That's a case for it. I'm thinking of a larger group situation here. He, he ran into this and... I don't know. Well, in this case, yeah, you get another move. But the board has to reflect reality. If the board is ever lying, has a wrong situation, then, you know, what, someone should have revealed a move. Uh, if two players pick the same point for their hidden move, and this happens a lot more on the 9x9 board than it does on the 19. 19, it's pretty rare. Uh, they just negate each other? They, well, it's, it's the first person to reveal it gets it. Does it don't ever... That's If your move... Is there terrifying. If your hidden move is therefore disqualified, do you then get to pick another? You do not. <laughs> but but what's kind of nice is that if your opponent reveals a hidden move, it's also your hidden move. You don't have to tell them that was your hidden move. Right. So they think there's more. Because yeah. they think they'll think there's another hidden move somewhere that's obviously not. What? Uh, how liable is bluffing your hidden move? Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's so good. So good. That's why. That's why I'm like seven dot in this. <laughs> and then. Because so much of it is a bluffing game, right? Was this devised because someone looked at Go and said, you know what, this needs to be more like Battleship? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, actually, actually, my own history with this uh, comes from playing Batu. Uh, and Batu was a game, it's, I don't think the servers are online anymore, but it's a Korean game um, for a few, that was, was active for a few years, probably about five years ago, um, maybe a little longer. I really don't know the history of Batu. Uh, but it was trying to combine Go and StarCraft. <laughs> and so the, it, was, it was really a game of Go, played on an 11 by 11 board, um, with a couple like StarCraft... Uh, StarCraft? StarCraft, the video game. Um, elements thrown in. And so one of the elements was, number one, uh, at the start of the game, or actually not at the start of the game, at some point during the game, again, this was played on a computer board, not a real board, and that's an important difference here. Um, you could play a hidden move. So you just announce, I'm using my hidden move on this turn, and a secret stone will go somewhere on the board where you place it. Mm -hmm. You can do this on any turn. Um, your opponent has a scan during the game. At one, one point during the game, he can scan one spot. Mm -hmm. he, he, what? he can scan it. Scan it. Oh, okay. And it'll detect a hidden move. That doesn't cost him a move. He's just, he's just trying to detect it. You only get to use it once. Yeah. Um, in Batu, you'd also start with a base, like the StarCraft idea. Um, the very start of the game, you both simultaneously pick three spots on the board to have uh, visual stones on the board. So, like really common bases would look something like, like this is a very common base pattern. So your opponent would put three stones somewhere and you'd simultaneously put three stones somewhere, like you, and you reveal together. Mm -hmm. um, 
If you place the same scout as your opponent, they both cancel out. This will become a negative point. If anyone ever played here for the rest of the game, they get automatic five points taken out of their score. <laughs> uh, there was also points along the edges of the board that were plus points. If you're a person who ended up with a stone here, you get an additional five points. So that's Batu. Okay, this is, Batu, Batu was a lot of fun and, and a cool game, but the servers went down and you really need to play it on a computer because of the bases and the hidden moves and the scanning and all that stuff. Hidden move go, you don't need any of that stuff. All you need is a paper, really, essentially, just to write down your hidden moves. So, um, and personally, I kind of like hidden move go better uh, just because Batu has so many crazy rules. I didn't tell you, Batu, you also pick a character to play, like a faction, and it gives you a special ability to use during the game. Um, like one of the characters has a special ability where it can speed up your opponent's clock. Does your opponent know, <laughs> does your, opponent know your character? Uh, yes. Yeah, so they know what, what special things you can do. But And you can, can you choose the same character as your opponent? I believe so, yeah, I think so. Again, it doesn't exist anymore. But um, One character allowed you to place an additional spot on the board that was worth negative five points if you ever played there. So if you have like a small one-eyed group in the corner or something that your opponent you wanted to force your opponent to capture. Mm -hmm. You put a negative spot right next to it, say, ah, <laughs> if you want to kill it, it's worth minus five points for you. Is it still worth it? How do you spell that? B-A-T-T-O-O, -O, I believe, okay. Batu. But again, it's not, you can still find information about it. Yeah. Um, again, it was like a big televised kind of event. It was, it was treated like a sporting event, like StarCraft is in, oh, in North Korea. Um, so it got really big. I don't think it really got that big. I mean, it got a TV show and and certainly there were I mean, sort of, Korea, but, uh, yeah, sort of, I don't, I'm not sure that I would call them famous yeah, right. Batu players, but a lot of, you know, professionals would dabble in it, that kind of thing. Um, but again, it was, it, was, it was an attempt to sort of commercialize and gamify Go and bring it up to, uh, I don't know, the modern aesthetic. So anyway, from that, I, it's just sort of where I learned Hit and Move Go about, and then, you know, if you go to, like, uh, all the, I think all these variations, for these variants are on Sensei's library on the website, so if you go and type in any of these names on Sensei's library, um, you, know, you can find Hidden Move Go, and they'll have a little page about it. Um, so that's up there. But certainly, I like to play at least three moves in Hidden Move Go, and I like to play on a smaller board, usually. Um, and in fact, I'll play anyone here in Hidden Move Go. Take and of course, there. some reason that Hidden Move Go don't ever go to like so common move, like go for Yeah, usually four. the strategy is do not... Go for First time four. you play Hidden Move Go, you like assume, this is a really good move. No, so, it's you know, super terrible, bad. Move, terrible, terrible. Move. It so, could be a good move. You want to find moves that are that are hard to discover. And then, and so, so like in Batu, a really common hidden move was here. All moves are equal. Yeah. All moves are equal in terms of discoverability. Oh, you mean that kind of discoverability? I do. Like in order for my opponent to discover this, he has to play a stone here. Is my opponent going to play a stone here? Yeah. It's super secret. <laughs> If you just go all out and kill this card. Your opponent should not all that useful, though. My, all right, I'll, 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 I'll tell you one of my secrets. There goes my stone. One of my super secrets yeah. for Hidden Move Go, my favorite point. On a 2 1 point? On a, on, a, on a especially smaller board, I really like the 3 2 point. Uh huh. 3 2 point doesn't come up in a lot of Joseki. A lot of Joseki actually ignore this point, or you can, you can choose to ignore it. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun point. Right, because think about your normal Joseki. If white takes the corner here, uh, I'm gonna approach from this side, right? I'm not gonna approach from over here. I'm gonna try to squeeze white stone. And white comes over here. And if I come under, white goes yoink. That's still hidden, right? Later on, I come over here. And, you know, white thinks he's all safe and stuff. Actually, well, at some point I need some sort of stone over here, right? And at some point I come in, you don't have a base anymore. So I forget. All right, so I push in here, white comes here. It's already dead. All right, if I come here, there's actually a white Joseki, or white goes here, it's also Joseki. Oh, this is, this is bad, real bad. Okay. So. White still hasn't found that there's a move here yet. <laughs> and this variation. Oh, that was neat. So, um, but. If, if, if your opponent puts Atari on your stone, on your hidden stone... You don't announce anything. You don't announce anything. You just go, you wasted a move. 
and so if you if you capture, but if he plays your hidden move, one of your hidden moves, you have to tell him. Yeah, you have to tell him. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, if, well, if your opponent Atari's your hidden move, often it's really good. I mean, it's it can be really really good because you know often when your opponent Atari's your stone, you all you have some sort of cutting point over here, right? Something like this. Yeah. So you do it, and White doesn't know there's a stone here. What if he takes? He yeah, just play if, over here. So you uh, understand. Right. The board, this is what the board looks like to White. Where do you play White? You play here, yeah. Normally. Sure. Yeah. All right. So meanwhile, I'll still a stone here. So maybe I come over here. Where do you play White? Normally, you play over here. <laughs> oh well. <wow. laughs> so now. Now you come on. Now you tanuki. <laughs> now you go do something else. You leave this little sucker right here. Because white thinks it's safe. White thinks he's fine. You go, oh, all right. <laughs> and Hunter moves later. <laughs> you go, damn. <laughs> so, uh, so in hidden, in hidden go here, yeah. you only announce when he plays on the hidden stone. Or captures it entirely. You, captures it if there is something that actually affects the game it. states. So you don't, you, don't, another move? You, don't, you don't have to announce code or threats or anything like that. No, 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 God no. No, that's, this is what all makes right. it fun. You're trying to take all the fun out of it. All right, well, <laughs> two questions. I'm that kind Dan of has two right. questions. If, if your opponent plays on it, you have to tell him, right? Yes. Because you have to actually say that was my move. Yes, right. And you that's actually a rule. That's you right. actually have to. It's not you have to. You are required. Yes. Because there is a stone. That's correct. Okay, and, and the other one, oh, I forgot. <laughs> what question? Um, I forgot. It, it was uh, does he have another move, right? What? Was it does he yeah, have another move? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. if he takes, yeah. if, you're ta if he takes your hidden move, uh -huh. you have to tell him. Um, you do. Uh -huh. The board has to. Be true. So if, well, if the board. no, no, but he has one more point than he, than, than he's aware of, right? He has one more capture. Right. So if you don't tell him, you're cheating by a point. So yes, that'll come up. All right. So you guys remember this list here? You guys want to vote on favorites? Here's the list. Let me read it back to you. We've got Pair Go, Capture Go, Auction Comey, Zen Go, Big Brother Go, One Color Go. Lottery go, capture go. Anyone, anyone counting? Yeah, uh, capture go twice. Uh, oh, capture go twice. Did I say that first? Yeah. Right. Oh. All right. So you guys have your favorites? Top three? Oh yeah, top three. Top of three. Course. I love those. Top three. All right. Here we go. Top three. Let's say who who had uh, pair go and it's one of their top three. You guys are lame. <laughs> No one for Perigo. You guys haven't played good Perigo yet. Well, Perigo is the standard. <laughs> in terms of go variants. Fine. Fine. Oh. Oh. Uh, capture Go, top three. Huh? One, we got one, two. All right, that's okay. nice. Capture Go. Capture go. Yeah. Oh, three. Three, all right. All right, we got three votes for Capture Go. Auction Comey? What's the Auction Comey? Okay. Dan will do Auction oh, Comey. Sure. Two, two for Auction Comey. Auction Comey. We just talked about this. You and I bid for Comey. We did this. We played Auction Go like 20 minutes ago. I started. Yeah, you're actually oh, so same. We didn't play the game. Same we didn't play the auction part. Same color. I'll give you. I'll I'll take black and give you six and a half points. Oh, now I'm okay. 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 So we got two, three for two for Auction Go, two for Auction Comey. Um, oh, there's oh I forgot Auction Go too. That's that's. Okay, that's not right. That's not a standard go variant, but it's something I think Andrew Jackson likes to play that one too. Or he'll, basically, the concept is this: at any point, you can auction off your your turn. You can pass they for exchange for, uh, <laughs> for some number of points at that point, so you can auction it off. Uh, kind of slows the game down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Well, you might get extra points. Why not? If 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 because. Why it seem I like mean, your partner's looking at the same position. Well, you might, you I mean, might you like, it, you're having, you might have a, diff, a difference of how much a position is worth. You might say, the next move here is pretty big, but is it worth 12 points? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll pass. I'll give it. I'll, I'll pass for 12 points. <laughs> and it's like bargaining in your head-to-head monopoly. -head okay. I mean, yes. 
Sure. Their entire game plan is based on That's another one. We didn't, we didn't talk about that one. Go. All right, uh, one color go. One color so far. <laughs> Dad John's like, no. Three people for one color go. Big brother go. How about uh, non-drinking version? I think it sounds like the more fun version. <laughs> drinking <laughs> version. Um, I, well, where are we gonna get? No, we don't want to drink. What if you don't want to drink? There's, there's no good. Both versions. We're not two going to actually do no, it. Only two for Big Brother Go. Not I'll vote Big Brother Go. All right, non-drinking version Big Brother Go. Lottery Go. That actually sounds pretty fun. What does Lottery Go again? You mix 15 stones uh, in your bowl. That sounds the wrong color. Oh, I'm looking at that. I'm about five for Lottery Go. Yeah, sure, sure. Lottery Go is your third one? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. It's good fun. You got six. Jump in the boat four times. <laughs> okay, you're gonna vote four times. Hit and move go? There we go. I know, I'm biased. I made you guys biased. So I got six. No, only five. Tom didn't vote for it. One, two, three, four, five. Only five. Lottery Go wins. Andrew Jackson would be so happy. You never said Zengo, because I was. Zengo! Oh, Zengo! Yeah. Cool. <laughs> nice. Four people for Zengo. All right. Well, a couple of you, I don't think, voted three times. But... Very good. You know, Zengo so, go for money could be interesting. <laughs> no. Well, no, really. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Who wants to play some Go variants? Yeah. Let's play some Go variants. Yeah. Yeah. 